working. Okay. Good morning. I'm delighted to introduce the next speaker. He's uh, Professor Rob Boyd. He studied physics in the University of California at San Diego and received uh, his PhD in ecology at the University of California, Davis. He has taught at Duke Emory University and UCLA, and currently he's a professor at the School of Human Evolution and Social Change at Arizona State University. His research is focused on the evolutionary psychology of the mechanisms that give rise to and shape human culture, and how these mechanisms interact with population dynamic processes to shape human culture variation. In addition to many research and theoretical papers, he has authored and co-authored several highly influential books in this field, like a Culture on the Evolutionary Process that won the Staley Prize awarded by the School of American Research, How Humans Evolved, Moral Sentiments and Material Interests, The Foundations of Cooperation in Economic Life, Foundations of Human Sociality, The Origin and Evolution of Cultures, Mathematical Models of Social Evolution, a guide for the perplexed, and not by Jean Salon, how culture transforms human evolution. His contribution to the field have positioned him as a pioneering leader in the study of gene culture coevolution and in the evolution of human cooperation. Professor Rob Boyd, thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Marie. So I'm speaking under the title, The Evolution of Human Uniqueness. So you'd think that I would know the answer to this question, are humans unique? But in fact, it's a, it's a question I think that um, it either doesn't have an answer or uh, the answer is trivial. Uh, the trivial answer is uh, every species is unique. Um, so there are something like a million species of beetles. Uh, and a lot of them are small and black and look the same to everybody who isn't an entomologist, uh, but they're all unique. That's just the nature of the complexity of life. Uh, and there's another sense in which the question is, um, well, my biology friends would say pernicious, because uh, it, it suggests that humans are separate from nature somehow, that uh, we have all the living things in one box and humans in another box. So um, the real question I want to speak to, this seems to have gone off on me, there we go. The real question is, are humans outliers in the natural world? So now we don't have to worry about whether, uh, what uniqueness means and all those kind of things. The question is, are humans really different in the same sense that an outlier in a data set is really different from other organisms? Now this still isn't the easiest question in the world because you have to pick a standard of measurement, and humans are prone to pick standards of measurement which make us look good. Uh, and biologists who study humans are delight in poking holes in those things. So man the tool maker, well, chimps make tools. New Caledonian crows make tools. Rooks make tools, etc. cetera. Uh, only humans have language. Well, that all depends on definitions, et cetera. So what I want to do is to convince you that humans really are outliers in the natural world, at least in the world of, of vertebrates, um, is to use the standard kind of criteria that biologists use to compare species. Um, so the first one is, is species range or ecological range. What range of environments does a species live in? This is a standard zoological criteria. Some species have tiny little ranges, others have giant ones. And humans, I think, have the largest range of any species on Earth. Uh, this is a composite satellite map of uh, the Earth from space. It shows where the lights are on today, but if an extraterrestrial biologist had come to the world 10,000 years ago when there were only hunter-gatherers, all humans live by collecting food, not by producing food, uh, and they'd taken a picture of where the hunter-gatherer campfires were alight, it would look pretty much the same. 